Well hi and welcome to this week's vlog, I hope you guys are well. Uh, if you watched last week you'll know that I've been doing a little bit of garden bird photography. Now this week I wanted to advance that forward a bit, do some more interesting stuff. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was set up a reflection pool to try and get some nice shots of the birds and uh, taking some water and getting their reflections. And the other thing I wanted to do was uh, resolve my hide situation because if you watched again last week you'll know that my hide at that point in time was the conservatory with a makeshift uh, green screen put up uh, with a hole cut out of it uh, which a wasn't very good for my photographs in the first place because I was quite far away from the perches but b wasn't very good for my relationship because my wife was getting sick and tired of looking out to the conservatory into the garden and seeing a great big green sheet so um so yeah so the first thing I decided to do was to remedy that by sorting myself out with a, a portable hide so on to phase two now of the uh, of the uh, garden bird photography extravaganza um, and I've, I've bought a couple of things that I'm hoping are going to advance the photography, take it on a bit further and get some nice shots. Uh, the first of which I'm about to put up now. This thing is the Bushware TP. Uh, it's some sort of pop-up hide. Uh, cost me 70 quid from Amazon. Uh, it's supposed to ping up really easily, so should we see if that works? Of course it would help if I wasn't such a no oh there we go. <clears throat> oh, instructions. It's incredibly easy to erect apparently. Bag once removed from the bag it will spring into shape. There we go then. Spring in. How do I get in? <laughs> oh, okay, so I need to turn it this way around.
Okay, so I've just literally just set this little portable hide up and I'm sat in it and I haven't zipped anything up yet and the birds are coming. I've got a robin already just hopping around and I've got some starlings who've already popped onto the thing. So I don't think it's going to freak the birds out at all, this hide whatsoever. Uh, so it's really good news. It means I can get in really nice and close or closer than I was and uh, get some nice shots but there are a couple of things I'm going to need to do I'm going to need to put some sort of table in here that I can put my camera down on it's actually really roomy I can't believe how much room there is in here and this is not a I'm not advertising this by any means by the way um, just making observations it's actually really quite roomy there's a lot of space in here um, and yeah I mean the birds are just just popping in as normal so um, yeah, it's fine. I'm going to have to lower down the seat a little bit so I can get a bit lower. And the other thing I'm going to have to do, because I've got some, because uh, I've moved my angle now from where I was previously when I was in the conservatory, I've got some branches or, or some perches that are overlapping each other. So I'm going to have to go and quickly give those a bit of a, a, a tweak and a turn around so I can make sure that I get all the shots that I want to without any of the perches interfering with the... Uh, with the, with the shot so yeah that's the next step but yeah so far it's actually quite warm in here as well it shields the wind quite nicely so yeah so far quite successful of well in terms of light and in terms of oh it's a robin I really want to get this robin well, I'm gonna go that's gone again that robin so elusive it's like it's been teasing me now for about the last three or four days every time I, I mean I haven't spent any significant time sat waiting for it but every time I look out the window it's on a perch, it's sitting there waiting for me and by the time I get my camera ready, it's gone there, it's back again, I'm going to have to write it back, I'm going to wait there. So I never quite got the robin in the positions that I wanted it to. Here are some images of what I did get, but unfortunately they're either not quite posed as I would like, not quite in the locations that I would like, or in this last instance, the eye just isn't as sharp as I really wanted it. So yeah, so it's a bit elusive and at the moment it's not flying onto any perches, it's jumping onto the fence and then down onto the little uh, I don't know what to call it really, a bit of turned wood uh, that's supposed to be a bird bath but it's all split and I can't quite capture it when it's actually on one of the perches. I've got one shot of it this morning um, which was quite good but other than that I've, it just seems to keep avoiding me so I took a couple of shots there, got a bit of video but still it's the, well that and the green finches they're the, they're the two birds that I really want to get better shots of. Um, yeah, I think it might be gone again now. I've got some plans for it though, I've got some plans, so watch this space.
So I've got a couple of other plans that I want to put into place today <laughs> as the birds are still trying to get on the feeder behind me. I've got this um I've got this drip tray here. It's got a little bit of paper on it. It's unfortunate. But I've got this drip tray. And uh I want to turn this into a reflection pool. So I'm gonna use that. Uh, I've got a table over there. I'm gonna put this some nice bits and pieces on here to try and tempt the birds in and use this as a reflection pool for some uh, nice photography. So I'm back in the hide and I've kind of half set this reflection pool up but I'm not sure about it to be honest with you at the moment. Uh, it's not in the, quite the right angle for me. I need to move it around a bit but I'm a bit confused as to... I'm not sure how I'm gonna, quite going to get the shot. You can kind of still see the lines of the, of the bottom of the tray underneath so I might be able to do some of that in post but it's going to be a bit of a pain in the bum to keep doing that all the time. Um, yeah, I'm not altogether sure about it at the moment. I guess it's going to need a bit more tweaking and some bits and pieces doing. I think I'm going to need some practice of actually taking the shots of the birds on it to see what it actually looks like before I really pass too much of a judgement, I think. I'm hoping for the robin. The robin's been about. I'm hoping he's going to come and hop down onto these rocks and uh, take the mealworms give me a shot. It's not the best setup, I'm not going to lie. Sparrow. It's not the best setup, but, you know, it's something. It's a start. And it's something maybe I can finesse as time goes along, but, you know, I just want to try to get something a bit different. A different type of shot. I'm not 100% sure about it, really. I think maybe... What I might need to do once I can get out is get some sort of black liner along the bottom that's flat so it hides those ridges in the reflections and then buy a better log and get some nicer stones and maybe just set it up a little bit a little bit better because it's not quite there you know but then if all you've got to use is what's in your garden you've got to kind of use your initiative and try and find something to to put on there haven't you so uh, here's the robin back again okay come on come on buddy come on come and find those mealworms oh it's coming over now is he going to work it out this is the question thank you mate thank you mate Come on. I think he's gonna there you go. Come on, come across. Oh, he's on the edge of it. I think he's just figuring it out. He's just working it out at the moment, I don't think he's too sure about it. Just for a second here, he jumped onto the corner. But it's on the corner, I can't get a shot there because I'm looking right down the line of the plastic. That's probably why most people cover the, the side edges as well. I haven't got enough to cover the side edges with though. Let's 
sitting in the little bowl at the moment feeding, but I need him to head over again. It's really cool though, my back garden was an absolute state <clears throat> before the lockdown started and then everyone would come out in it. I mean we'd, we'd have I'd cook a barbecue in it but you know it wasn't nice enough to sit out in or to, to do anything in and lockdown's been a crazy time but in some respects it's been really quite good you know the opportunity to focus on your home and your garden and yourself and, uh, and you know, take away all the unimportant things in life that we thought were really important and now you know it's mad I'm sitting here in my garden in a bird hide with a whole load of feeders and stuff that I've made myself I never would have dreamt of doing this and now it's fantastic Yesterday's reflection shots weren't exactly a roaring success and I think the reason for that is because I didn't line everything up correctly I just sort of plonked it down on the table had a bit of a play and then left it so this morning because I really want to you know this is what I want to get I want to get some decent reflection shots so this morning what I've done is I've, uh, I've decided to go scientific so I've got this uh, anatomically correct and life-size model of a, of a garden bird and I'm going to put that down on where I'm hoping for them to land and I'm going to line up the camera and line up the pool so I'll get the perfect reflections and then hopefully when a real life bird comes and lands on it I haven't got to faff about and uh, worry about not getting the shot. So I've lined it up with the bottle which now looks perfect, the reflections are spot on. There's a bit of a, well not a mess, but there's a bit of distraction in the background because it was catching some of the shingle that's in the box. So what I've done is I've chopped down some of the bush that's on the right hand side of my garden and just laid those branches over in that area which now covers that. So that's now just a, a background of green. Uh, so yeah, so it's time to feed everything up and then we're ready to go. It's amazing really what you can attract into your garden I never even you know I never even thought that I'd get any birds in let alone the variety I have I mean I, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say it again I'd really like to see those green finches there I said it can come back I'd like to get I'd like to get goldfinch in here you know I know they're in the area I've had them before need to put some niger seed up I know I know that's why they're not coming we were talking about it on the podcast it's that it's that creative outlet you know it's that creative outlet that that people people like us need something just to focus on something to to 
something to allow you to express yourself. Normally it's landscape, sometimes for me it's street, other things as well, but in this instance right now, can't do landscape, can't do street, can't get out. So the creative outlet is set up something in your back garden and trying to track some birds in. But I'm not sure what's creative about sitting around in a, essentially a camouflage tanning booth for hours on end. I think this is what they mean when they talk about patience. You can see how these top wildlife photographers, you know, make their money or how hard it is for them to make their money because anyone, anyone can take a shot of a starling or a, a whatever, a garden bird on a feeder and a lot of people can take a shot of a garden bird on a perch if you set the perches up. But to get that shot that's spot on you know, you're sitting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and, and, you, and they're wild animals. You can't pose them, you can't say, excuse me mate, would you mind just popping over there? So these wildlife photographers who get, you know, make the big bucks from the spot on shots, the patience and the determination and perseverance they must have to, to literally just sit wait and wait and wait until that opportunity arises and then be alert enough and technically skilled enough to get it it's amazing really I'm not sure what this vlog will be called it'll be like Gary's bird hide musings rather than how to take photographs of birds using a reflection pool it'll be how to sit around and wait for birds but not actually get any at all how to get a numb ass how to look a prat in your own back garden it's a good one How to get bird shit all over your windows and your car. So in all honesty, I wasn't really 100% happy with the position of the reflection pool. Even though I tweaked the background slightly, I still didn't like it as much as I, I wanted to. So I decided to move the pool a lot closer to the hide so the background would actually be the really bright yellow leaves that I've got in my garden and I thought that would make a, a really nice background for it. And moving it closer meant that I needed to switch out lenses and this is actually quite interesting because I managed to get this 70 to 200 on uh, to use instead of the 150 to 600 and with the pool that close and me being very quiet in the hide I did actually manage to get quite a few birds up and onto the reflection pool uh, and it resulted in some quite nice shots.
did finally get the shot of the elusive Robin 